it's it's really cool being on the other side of that, you know? I'm usually I'm usually looking out at you guys, so it's just really really awesome. Really appreciate our worship team and they're growing. We've got a bigger team and they're stepping out of their comfort zones. So um well, tonight is a little different for me because I'm going to bring a word to you, and this is different for me. Um, so, excited. Um, Pastor Scott, thanks for giving me the opportunity. Appreciate it. Um, so, I just want to tell you a little bit about me. If there are those of you here that maybe don't know me all that well, you've seen me play guitar. I'm up here doing worship type things. Um, my name is Thomas. I'm the worship pastor here. I've been here for a couple of years, and um, God called my family to step out of our comfort zones and and pursue a full-time ministry position, and so the long and short of it is I said, okay, Lord, and where do you want me to go? And he said, I didn't give you a location. I just gave you a, gave you a task, and I'm so glad that God called us here. Um, it was just really, I could, I could tell you it was like some profound thing, but it was, and, and it was, but it's just funny. Like, well, how did you end up in Birdsboro? Well, it's a website called churchstaffing.com, and I put my resume on it, and the Lord opened the door for this position. So, um, praise the Lord. I'm just glad to be here with you guys. So, um, get my clicker here. So, have you guys ever experienced a time in your life where you had something to do, you had something to accomplish, but you didn't have everything you needed in order to complete that task. Can anybody think of a time when you had something like that, where you, or you were, or you had something to do, and maybe you got there and you didn't have everything you needed, and you were like, "Oh shoot!" Um, maybe you can think of a few things. Does anybody want to shout one out for me? Can we get, can we get, can we get some audience interaction? What do you got? A test. Okay, so you you thought you had everything studied. Ooh, I've been there. And then you're like, "Oh, what? Wait, what? I, I you know." I did some testing this last year, and they purposely put some stuff on there that, that wasn't in the study guide. That was just not, not cool. Not cool. Um, anybody else care to share something where you felt unprepared? Yeah, that's actually, yep, I was actually going to talk about that one, Scott. Yes. Um, yeah, that's, that's good. Um, so we used to go, I haven't gone camping since we've been over here, but... Um, <laughs> Scott, you're going to love this because I, he, he's, I say this all the time. So in Montana, um, <laughs> this is my slogan. Okay, so when we went back where we're from, we would go camping, and it, it would be like an hour probably to get to a campsite. It wasn't like super close. I know you guys have like French Creek, and I, don't, I haven't been to all the camping places around here, but um, all the campsites, but we would like drive an hour. We'd pack up all of our stuff. We'd have the tent. We'd have the, the wood. We'd have the, the camp stove, all that stuff. We'd get out there. And I'd go to, like, fire up the camp stove. I forgot to bring the propane for the camp stove. Like, I brought the camp stove and not the propane. Like, oh, no. So it's either, it's like, well, okay, well, we'll cook on the fire. Okay, cool. Well, let's, let's get the fire going. Let's do that. Did you bring the axe? Oh, I brought the wood, but I forgot, like, the, the, the axe to, like, you know, make kindling, like, make smaller pieces so I could start it up. So I'm like, okay, so let's just, like, bash it with rocks and stuff and, like, see if we can, like, make it smaller. Go out. I guess we're going out in the woods and we're going to find some kindling. So, that, yeah, that's a good example. Anybody else have an example of a time? What? Moving. moving. What kind of example you got about moving? Got something specific? You've been living this out, Ethan. So, like, you have, you should, multiple times. I know, I know your dad said that your that his truck broke down so that was like un, like that was not having everything you need uh when you need to move and you have this truck and then all of a sudden it's like nope not going to work um so i've worked on i've worked on my own vehicles a lot in the past and i'll just tell you a story about about not having everything i need so like pretty much every time i asked my wife this too i was like well, can you think of a time where i've where i've you know not had everything I need. She's like, pretty much every time you work on a vehicle. Like, I can't think of a time where you just, like, went to the parts store and came back and you just had everything and it was, like, super easy. You know, like, you, you look up a YouTube video. Oh, yeah, this will take you about 20 minutes and then it's, like, six hours into the job and you're, like, dealing with rusty bolts and you're, like... I just had to replace half my car, so I hope it works again. So, um, but I, I had this truck, and I, I bought it used from a guy I didn't know very well, and, and it seemed like a solid truck. Well, I found out after I bought it, I didn't have all the information, 
that um, this pickup needed a timing belt job done. It's a Toyota pickup, and I was, I was like, oh, no. Like, I can't drive this anymore now that I've discovered that it needs it. It's still running, but for now. So I go and look up these YouTube videos. I don't know, like, I'm sure this is, like, probably, like, I don't know how many of you have worked on vehicles. But anyway, these videos, like, walk you step by step. So I'm like, okay, it says it's going to take me about eight hours to do this job. It's, like, huge, like a huge job. And so I start following the videos, and somewhere along the line, I'm, and I'm pausing, and it's taking me, like, twice as long to do this job. And I get down to like the last thing I need to remove off the front of the engine to get this belt to come free. And somewhere they forgot to mention this. This was not in the video, I'm telling you. I went back and like watched it again. But there was like a special tool I needed from the parts store to take this like last thing off. And I didn't have it. Like it wasn't like just a wrench. It was like this special wrench, this special pulley thing. And the store was closed. It was like 10 o'clock at night. I was like, I'll get halfway done, I'll go to bed, and then I'll get up and finish it the next day. And I was like out at my parents' house, like away from town anyways, but everything was closed. And I was like, okay, uh, so the whole thing's apart now. I can't leave, can't do anything else except just like figure this out. So my, my stepdad and I figured out a way around this thing, but it added like three hours to our, to our job, and it was horrible. So um, I say all that to say for you, here tonight. My, my, I've got some big ideas for you. And the first one is um, God has given you everything you need to live a godly life. Okay, He did not forget to tell you about the pulley wrench that you needed. He's got it covered. He's got the propane for your camp stove, which is why I put the camp stove up there. Um, the next one I have for you, God gives us second chances. And he gives us a lot of them. It would not be you know, endless second chances. I'm thankful for that. Um, third, you have a circle of influence in your life. Each of you has a circle of influence. Um, and I just want to, I just want to pray again here before we go any further. Lord God, I just pray that um, as we, as we open up your word here and as we talk through this, Lord, I just pray, um, you know, I've I feel this is on my heart to share with these students, and, and Lord, just do what you want to do with it. Um, if it if it reaches one student tonight, that's all I ask, Lord, is that this resonates with somebody here tonight, um, the way that it's resonated with me and in my own life. And so, Lord, just just have your way here tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so we're going to read, and I'm going to try this out. It's going to be dangerous, but I want to see if you guys can read this with me, okay? Are you ready? We're going to read this together. So here we go. By his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to know him, the one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. You guys are doing great. Check that out. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are promises. Oh, that's my fault. These promises enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. So God has given us... Um, He's given us promises, and I'm going to call them actually tools tonight. He's given us some tools. Um, there are lots of promises of God, um, and I know many of you know what a lot of them are. We could quote them, but um, I'm just going to focus from, this is from Second Peter chapter 1. Um, I'm going to call them tools, um, and I just want to know, I just want to keep some interaction going between us here. So what are some tools that you think that God, just practical tools that God has given us to help us live a godly life? Shout them out. Prayer. It's good. The Bible. It's good. The Holy Spirit. Nice. Yes. Very good. Anybody else? He's given us patience. I like that. Yes, he has. He has given us all kinds of ways to test our patience. Yes, to make us grow in it. You've got it, Zeke. He's given us free will. That's good. He's given us free will to choose um, to live a godly life. That's good. So I've just got a few here, and most of those are on this list. Um, 
But I just, I just put this list together. So um, he's given us his word. We got that. Um, the word is alive and powerful. And if you choose to read it, if you choose to open up your Bible, and I can't believe I forgot my Bible. Like, that was just part of my message, and I, like, left it in the back. Um, shame on me. Um, but the Word of God is alive and powerful, and if we will open it up, and if we will study it, and not just, not just read it, but, like, we have, guys, we have technology in our pockets. We can, like, Google anything we need to. We can, like, use Bible apps to help us read the Word of God. There's really not a good reason to not know the word of God in this day and age. We don't have to just read like the King James version where it's like thee, thou dost though, what, you know, like, so, um, he's given us his word and he's given us the Holy spirit. The Holy spirit is your helper. If you don't know what the Holy spirit is, if that's kind of like a, a new concept to you, or you think like, well, yeah, I know that, the, that there's the Holy Spirit, but, like, how does that fit into my life now? Like, aren't I, don't I have God for that? Well, yes, you have God through the Holy Spirit. Jesus sent the Holy Spirit when he was resurrected to be your helper, to help you through your life, to, to give you encouragement, to guide you. Um, and so as we seek the Lord, the Holy Spirit prompts us to share our faith and prompts us to worship and to um, overcome, you know, the lies that the enemy puts puts on our minds. Um, so prayer, absolutely 24 seven access to God. You can talk to God anytime and you don't have to, you don't have to do it a certain way. You don't have to wear like a cool robe or anything, although you can, if you want to. Um, but you don't have to do anything fancy. God is right here. You can, you can walk, you could step out, pray. You could pray right now while I'm talking and interrupt me if you wanted to. And God would listen to you. He'd be like, Hey, you should probably not do that, but you know, Hey, timing's everything. Um, but Worship is another one that I put down. God gave us worship. He created you to worship. And obviously, like, I know we have those conversations like, um, you know, worship can look like many different things. But obviously, in this context, we're going to talk about the music part of it. Surprise, I'm the worship pastor. But God gave you worship. He, he gave you that as a tool, as a weapon against the enemy. So when you're feeling discouraged, that you can sing praises to God in the midst of that. There's so many people in the Bible that, that did that. They were like, hey, I'm facing opposition. I don't know what to do. But guess what? I'm going to worship God. I'm going to praise him in the storm because he is good and because he's always faithful. And I know that he's going to be faithful. Um, God's given us intellect, the ability to learn and to grow in wisdom. So again, back to the Bible, back to learning. You don't always, not everything has to come from the Bible. There are some really good books out there that you can read and you can, you know, listen to podcasts and listen to good godly encouragement and good godly words out there. And God gave us the church. He gave us this right here um, to help us that we can ask for prayer. We can reach out if we're struggling with something. We can you know, honestly, if, if we're having a problem with someone else, God's given us that ability that we can come to one another and say, hey, I'm struggling with this. I don't understand why you're, you know, treating me this way, or I don't know why you're treating somebody this way. And, you know, can we just like pray about that? Can we talk about it and do it in a loving way? Um, so I just want to talk a little bit about Peter tonight. Um, just kind of give you some background on Peter um, and paint kind of a picture for like his, his two letters that he wrote, obviously first and second Peter. Um, he didn't write any other letters that we're aware of. Um, but he wrote these letters to Christians who were living, um, kind of like after the spread of the early church, this is about like 30 years after the resurrection of Jesus. And Peter was the one, if you guys know, was, was the one who start, who Jesus used to start the church. And so he's writing these, these letters 30 years into it, um, and he's, he's, um, he's encouraging them. Um, at this point in history, the gospel is, has been spreading, um, but the, um, the Christians are facing persecution for what they believe a lot more than we deal with. Um, you know, they're, they're being like, beaten and whipped and they're being, you know, some are being killed and just shamed and shunned because they won't align with the culture. Um, and so who is Peter? Um, you know, you guys know that, you know, that Peter is a disciple of Jesus. Um, he's the one who, uh, walks on water. And by the way, this is really funny to me. I was, I, I just have to stop and tell you this. I was looking up images and this is an AI image. I'm pretty sure. Cause why is Peter looking the other way? Um, just thought that was really funny. Um, but like duty's over here. That's why you're drowning. So, um, but Peter's the one that walks on water. He asked Jesus if he can come out to him on the water when they see him. 
Um, Peter's the guy that that says he would never deny Jesus. Oh, I would never do that. And he's he's willing to, you know, I'm willing to f- to face persecution for you, Lord. Um, but he and he's also the disciple who um, draws a sword on a Roman soldier when they go to arrest Jesus. cuts cuts the soldier's ear off. Jesus miraculously heals it, puts it back on. He's like, no, 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 let's not do that, Peter. Um, that we don't need to do that. I already told you what was going to happen, so it's cool. Um, just let him arrest me. Um, and he, um, he tells Jesus he would never deny him. And Jesus tells him, you're, you're going to actually deny me, Peter, um, three times. Uh, and, and he does. Um, and Peter is so overcome with sadness and grief that, that he did that. And, you know, the rooster crows and, and he's like, oh my gosh, just like Jesus said, I really did deny him. And so he runs away and he's actually not even present at Jesus' crucifixion. In fact, none of the disciples are except for John. Maybe that's why he was the one Jesus loves. I don't know. But, um, you know, just interesting. John was the only one that was there. But here's the thing. Peter loved Jesus, but he made some pretty big mistakes along the way. He he screwed up. He, he, he liked to kind of shoot from the hip. The cutting off the guy's ear thing was kind of like lashing out like, whoa, dude, like chill. Um, you know, like you were just sleeping a second ago while Jesus was praying, but like now you're up and you're going to like chop a dude's ear off over it. So, um, but I just, I think that's encouraging for me that, um, that, G- that Peter screwed up a lot, but, but Jesus still loved him. In fact, um, you know, maybe some of you feel like Peter tonight. Maybe you feel like you're trying to take a stand for God. Maybe you feel like, you know, you don't know where to start. Um, you're trying to be brave and you're trying to find opportunities to share your faith. And maybe it's just not happening or maybe you're, maybe you're afraid um, of persecution. The truth is that if we don't have a solid foundation of the knowledge of Jesus, like without the word of God deep in us, the world is going to tempt us into these, into the feel-good things of the world um, and suck us in and drag us away from God. So we have to stand firm in our solid foundation. Um, you know, maybe maybe you guys are here tonight and you're just here for the games and the snacks. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, you know, I know we have a mixed bag in here tonight. So maybe your parents just told you to come to church and you just, like, you're like, can we just play some more games? Like, there's some Cheetos back there with my name on them. Um, but... I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that each one of you is here. I'm really privileged to be able to share this with you and just just let you know that Peter wasn't perfect. None of the disciples were perfect, but God used them in great ways. And, you know, I believe that God is is tugging at our hearts tonight and just asking, if you're not living for me right now, are you ready to? And so if any of you are here tonight, and, you know, you, maybe you don't live for God. Maybe you say you do, or maybe you're new to your faith. Maybe you're not quite sure, you know, have I given my life to Jesus completely? Have I actually asked him to live in my heart? And you don't have to, you don't have to pray a, a special prayer, but we do need to, we do need to just, if, if you're in a place where you need to know Jesus for the first time, I never want to miss an opportunity for to tell you that that can start right now. If you want to start living for Jesus, it start it can start right now. It doesn't have to start at an altar call. It doesn't have to start on a Sunday morning or with 10 people around you. It can start with you sitting in your seat and just saying, even if, even if you are saved and even if you do know Jesus, but you feel like you've kind of slipped away, that you can say, Lord, I, I want you to be everything that I need. And Jesus, I recognize that, that you are what I need to live a godly life. And I want to live for you. And I, I, I again say, or I say for the first time, Jesus, I recognize that, that you're the son of God and that you died for my sins. And that's all you have to do. And just start living for him. Just say, I'm sorry. And, and just, just, just start living for God. Um, that's your first step. And then we just, you start, you just start learning more. You start diving in. Um, and it might seem, it might seem kind of strange, but I'm kind of encouraged that even though Peter walked with Jesus for three years, he was physically there with Jesus, um, that he still got it wrong. I mean, I, I, I'm not dogging on Peter at all, but that's that's all of us. I think I think that if we're really honest, like we're just we're just like Peter, where we love God, we're trying, but we make mistakes. Um, he was afraid of being persecuted, so he denied Jesus. 
um, who was one of his closest friends. But I love this. Check this out. In the, in the, the book of John, um, after Jesus had died and been resurrected, um, Jesus makes several appearances after his resurrection. Um, he make, but he makes a specific, a specific visit to, uh, to make breakfast for Peter and a handful of his other disciples. They're out fishing. And um, it says that, that Peter, and it, it names a few of the other disciples, but they're out fishing all night and they don't catch anything. I'm sure, some, I'm sure most of you probably know this story, um, that they end up seeing a guy on the shore. They don't know it's Jesus. And like I said, he'd made some other appearances, but he makes another appearance and he's on the shore and he tells them it's early in the morning and they haven't caught anything all night. He's like, why don't you cast your net on the other side of the boat? And they're probably like, I mean, we're professionals at this, but okay, it's been all night. That's when we fish. But yeah, let's do it in the morning on the other side of the boat. Why didn't we think of that? Um, but they end up catching like a huge, massive amount of fish. And um, so they go and, and they they bring the fish in. Jesus is making breakfast. Um, he cooks up some, some uh, breakfast sandwiches for him with some fish. You know, he's like, throw that on there, get a croissant. Um, no, I'm just kidding. He doesn't do that. Um, but he, but he asks Peter um, three times. He asks Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter was kind of hurt by that. He was kind of like, like he kept asking him, you know, yeah, yeah, Jesus, you know that I love you. And, but it's funny to me, like, I think that that's like a, um, to me, it's like a, a redemption for Peter. Like Jesus said, well, you denied me three times. So I want to hear you say that you love me three times. Like that's all it takes is just, just to be redeemed in that moment. And so it's just a, just a, an encouragement that Jesus gives us second chances. In fact, Jesus already told Peter, like before this, that, that he would be the rock on which he builds his church. He like gave, like, that's when he said, you, you know, Simon, you are now Peter. And that means rock. And on my, on this rock, I'll build my church. Um, so I just think that's really cool. Um, God gives us second chances and, he gave, he gave Peter many, and he's got many second chances in store for you. You just got to keep, just keep walking out your faith with him. Just keep trusting him. And when you, when you fall down, just get back up again. Um, so it goes on to say in Second Peter here, um, it talks about supplementing your faith. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to stay on this, but um, it just says in, in the fall, in the next verses, it says um, to, it says in verse five to supplement your faith, which means just to add to, to bring along with your faith. You need a generous portion of moral excellence, knowledge, self-control, patient endurance, Zeke. Um, he's got patience with me. I'll tell you that godliness, brotherly affection, sisterly affection, um, love for everyone. And it says, it says, the more that you grow like this, the more productive and useful you will be in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But those who fail to develop in this way are short-sighted or blind, forgetting that they've been cleansed from their old sins. We need to not forget. We need to not forget that we've been cleansed and that we have a mission, that we need to grow in our faith and our knowledge of Jesus. Don't forget that he forgave your sins. So, dear brothers and sisters, work hard to prove that you really are among those God has called and chosen. Do these things and you will never fall away. Then God will give you a grand entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I just want to say about this, this previous verse here that it says, work hard to prove that you are among those God has called. Um, this doesn't mean that you have to work for your salvation. All it means is that when, when we, when we stand in this, this, when we choose moral excellence, we choose godliness, we choose to love everyone the way that Jesus loves everyone. When we have self-control, when we, we choose the side of Jesus, when it's easier to, to choose like a worldly reaction or a reaction that, that everybody else like to get angry quick or to, to react when somebody, you know, persecutes us or makes us feel, you know, stupid for what we believe or whatever. When we, when we choose to live God's way, when we're, we're working hard, that, those are ways that you can work hard. When you share your faith with someone, when you 
offer to pray for someone when you don't you don't want to. Maybe you're like, I don't really want to ask them if I can pray for them because then that means I'm going to have to. And like, or what if they say no and then I feel stupid? But these are ways that you can work hard to prove that you are God's called and chosen. People won't know if you don't show them. Like it's it's good to live a life that represents Christ, but we've got to be willing to step out, I believe, and share and do things that make us uncomfortable. Like even even just like I'm so thankful for the the worship team members that we have that are stepping out of their comfort zones. Um, I'm thankful for the leaders here that are stepping out. They're willing to say, hey, like, let me do announcements. Let me pray for students. Let me do this. No, I don't. I don't always want to because I'm scared that I'm going to be rejected or whatever. But but they're willing to step out. And that's that's working hard to prove that you are called and chosen by God because you are. Um, if you truly want to live a godly life, students, um, and experience all that God has for you, you need to develop some habits like these. These six habits are a really great start. These things that you can do, your prayer life, your worship life, your time with the Holy Spirit and seeking him, um, spending time in God's word, getting getting equipped for what God has for you, even when you don't know what it is. It doesn't matter. If you have the word hidden in your heart, then the Holy Spirit will bring it out in you when the time is right. Um, my last point is just your circle of influence. Um, and the truth is, is that you all have a circle of influence in your life, whether whether you think you do or not, whether you think anybody's influenced by your actions or not, they are. Um, and maybe you've heard this saying before, but you become, I've heard this said before, you become or you are who you hang out with. Um, and I've also heard, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. And I just want to challenge you. It's great it's a, it's a good thing. It's important to have um, people in your life who love God and who challenge you towards God. It's also a great thing to have people in your life that you can witness to for the Lord. And you need to have both. You can't, you, you can have, you, you, I don't know if you can have too much of like the godly influence, but you need both. But, it, but you can have too much of the worldly influence and that will stray you away. And so you just, you need to be on guard. You need to recognize that um, life isn't all about just what makes me feel good and, and, and oh, I don't want to upset the apple cart. I don't want to upset somebody. Um, Jesus didn't go around saying, oh, I'm just going to try to go upset somebody, but he knew that he needed to speak the truth in love. And there are times where we can either be afraid to speak out or there are times where we go the other way and we maybe get too harsh with people because maybe because we're nervous and so we just we just say whatever we think we should say in the moment. But trust the Holy Spirit and ask the Holy Spirit what you should say to somebody if they, you know, if they want to know something about God or if they're questioning why you live your life the way you do or why you don't do the things that they do and they feel kind of, you know, they, they feel conviction by that is what that is. And, and it's an opportunity for you to love them and not say, well, I don't do that because, you know, that's a sin. You know, that's not really like going to help somebody to feel close to like, oh, I want to be a part of that group that, you know, makes people feel bad for sinning, you know, but, but you can love people in those moments and you can just say like, hey, I just, I just, I believe what the word of God says. I'm not judging you but this is what I do because I love Jesus and I want to be like Jesus. And, and he's, he's given me these commands to live by because he loves me. Um, so if you want to effectively love your friends and your family to Jesus, those, those habits that I put up, those six things and more, um, those are great places to start. Um, I just want to give you guys a couple challenges tonight before, before I close. Um, if you guys have a phone, would you just, Pull it out for me. Just let me see that you have it. It's okay. I'm not going to take it away or anything. Cool. If you're an iPhone user, I like you. Just kidding. Just kidding. If, I like you if you're not an iPhone user, too. You can put that up. Uh, you got, like, a cool, like, straight line of cameras instead of, like, a thing like this. So, um, okay. You have it? Do you guys know how to use a QR code? You guys know how to, This has been coming up lately, so I'm just, I'm just curious. You guys all know how to use one of these? Okay. So I hope this works. I tested it earlier. I thought it worked. But that's going to take you, this is my first challenge to you. Um, 
This is called the Bible Recap with Tara Lee Cobble, and it's specifically the Bible Recap with Tara Lee Cobble because there's one that doesn't have her. Um, I've been going through this. This um, this is chronologically going through the Bible, and I've really been enjoying it. Uh, Lily, my wife, um, actually introduced it to me, and she told me it was great, and she wouldn't shut up about it, and so I was like, all right, fine, I'll give it a shot, and then I really liked it, so I was like, I'm sorry I, that I doubted you. Um, I should have not done that ever, so. <laughs> um, so if you are looking for a great way to read the Bible chronologically, this is not Genesis through, like, this isn't just beginning to end of reading the Bible. This is actually bouncing around and reading um, historically, like, chronologically. Um, it's really cool. Um, I've been doing it for a couple weeks, and I've actually missed quite a few days. Um, I, do you guys use the Version Bible app? Do you guys all use it? Like, it, do you, if you don't, raise your hand. If you don't use the Version Bible app, yeah, there's probably less hands. Okay. Um, so the Version Bible app is a really great way to just do devotionals and studies and stuff. If you don't know how, just turn to somebody next to you because I, I didn't see very many hands. So I think pretty much everybody else, like besides a couple, um, if you're interested. But the Bible recaps on there, they have like a little like a little prayer, like as you prepare to read, and then you read like three or four chapters, and then there's like a five-minute video that Tara Lee Cobble just kind of enlightens you on what you read, and it's really, really good, and five minutes is like super easy, and I've been really into it. So um, the best version of the Bible that you can read, the best version is the one that you'll read. So um, find a translation that's easy to read, Please, the, the Bible app, um, you can choose versions. I like the NLT. It's the New Living Translation. Um, it's a really easy read. Like, it's, it's really easy. Um, I, but, I, but I've gone through different ones, and you can flip through and, and see what you like best, what's easiest to understand. Um, but you need your daily dose of God's Word in your life. So prioritize this. Remember, he's, he's given us everything we need, and his word is, is the biggest, one of the biggest pieces of that, um, picking up your Bible. So my second challenge to you, and I feel like a dummy because I didn't bring my Bible up here, um, but have you guys ever heard of the 30-day Bible challenge? Has anybody heard of that? Like, sometimes there's like a 30-day, like, reading your Bible challenge, but this is a 30-day Bible challenge where you physically bring your Bible everywhere you go for 30 days. What do you guys think of that? Who would do that? Who would, who would say right now, like, I would do that for 30 days? That's awesome. Like, you physically carry it around like it's, like, not in your backpack. No, 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 no. No, I mean your Bible, like a real one. No, phone doesn't count. Because the thing is, is nobody knows that that's your Bible. They just think that's your phone. Um, so I would challenge you guys. Um, we did this in our youth group back in Montana a long time ago, and I thought it was really cool. It was really effective in helping you to have opportunities to talk about Jesus with people. And it's a little awkward. I'm not going to lie to you. You go through, the, go through the grocery store aisle, you're checking out, and, like, I have a big Bible. It's not a little one. It's, like, this big study Bible. So you, like, go up and, like, get out your credit card, and you're like, oh, hold on just a second. You're like, thump. All right. You're like, oh, what, what is that? Oh, that's my Bible. Oh, okay. Um, all right. Carry that with you, huh? Yes. Yes. Yes, I do. And you can, you can even tell them I'm doing a 30-day Bible challenge, you know, with, for my youth group, you know, and we're just challenged to bring the word of God with us everywhere we go. Boom. Just like that. You have an opportunity to talk about God. They might not say anything else to you, but you know what? You could say before you leave, is there anything I can be praying for you? My wife does that all the time, and I love it. She's so good at doing that. Like, she's like an inspiration to me. I keep talking about her tonight. So this is, this is recorded. We're going to have to send her a copy of it. Um, but I just want to just want to give you that challenge as a way to make Jesus visible through your life to other people. Just something simple like carrying your Bible around. Um, so to wrap this up, um, Peter he he wrote this second letter um, that I referenced tonight. Second Peter he was writing from a place of urgency because. He's writing it to these Christians that had, had spread out from Jerusalem. And he was writing it this 30 years, like I said, 30 years after the church began. So the church was still pretty young. Um, but he was writing from a place of urgency to these Christians because he knew that his time was coming to an end. Um, Peter was actually crucified for his faith, like Jesus was. Um, not long after he finished writing Second Peter. It wasn't long after at all. Um, but he had an urgency for 
for equipping Christians and, and for, for sharing the gospel and making sure that it went forward, um, that, that he needed to encourage Christians to stand strong in their faith and to not give up. And that's, that's just what I want to charge you guys with tonight, just to, to share the gospel. Don't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, so if you would, if you would pray about, um, bringing your Bibles with you, I would really love to hear stories about what God does through that. Like, I hope that I don't hear zero stories. I hope that it's not like, oh yeah, no, we didn't do that. Um, I really hope that you'll do it. Um, and I'll do it too. I mean, I don't, I, I go to, I work here, but I also go outside of these walls. So I'll bring my Bible with me too, and I'll tell you stories. So um, God's going to do some great things just through a, a small step of obedience like that. Um, students, you can either influence or you can be influenced by the world. And if you don't know the word of God, um, if you don't spend time talking to God and singing praises to him, worshiping him outside of like a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning, um, if you don't arm yourself with the knowledge of God on a regular basis, the world will influence you and drag you away from God. So we have to be, um, we have to be in the word of God. We've got to be vigilant about that, about spending time with the Lord. We've got to be on guard and recognize that Satan wants to destroy us, but God has given us everything we need to live a godly life. Um, yeah. Satan only has the power that you give him. He doesn't actually attain any power. Um, so we've, we've got to stop giving the enemy the power that he, that he doesn't have over us. Um, if, we, if we will devote less time to our comforts and our preferences and devote our lives more and more to Jesus and his word, he will empower you through the Holy Spirit to live the life that you were created for and to bring others into the knowledge of God as well. Um, Natalie, would you mind coming? I'm just, I just asked Natalie if she would come in and play this, this song available that we were singing um, at the close of worship. And... Um, you guys can stay seated just for a minute. I just want to, I just want to take a few moments with you guys and just ask if you would respond to this to this message to to what maybe God's speaking to your heart, maybe what the Holy Spirit's put on your heart tonight. If, um, oh, good, we have green cards out. So these these green connect cards. If each of you would just hold one up, so I know that you have it. You don't have to write on that for me. In fact, I don't want you to if you don't have something that you really feel is on your heart to write, okay? I want you to pray about it. You have a few minutes while Natalie sings. And I would just ask, would you guys just reflect for a moment and think about maybe where God is calling you to reach someone or to just simply pray for someone? Um, you know, sharing the gospel doesn't need to be as scary as maybe we put it out to be. We don't have to go and shake a Bible at somebody like and tell them you need to repent. But maybe there's somebody in your life, and I want you to really think about one person. I don't want you to get overwhelmed by this. But if you guys would just close your eyes for me and just just in this time, just just think about somebody that maybe you you want to pray for, that you want to pray for their salvation. Maybe it's a family member. Um, and if you would if you would do me a favor and put your name on that card, um, put your, your phone number on that card, and you don't need to put down the person. Um, Pastor Scott and the leaders and I would like to know what you guys are, who you guys are praying for and who you're wanting to encourage to Jesus. Um, everybody's got to have somebody in their life that they're praying for, that they're believing for. Maybe it's somebody that you can't talk to that like you don't see all the time. Maybe it's a family member far away. Um, but if you would be brave enough to put your name and number down in that prayer request, or maybe you have a prayer need, maybe maybe you're still new.
So we're just going to take I said, just, just pray, guys. And Pastor Scott will come up and close us out here in a minute. Narrow as the road may seem, I'll follow. tonight with grateful hearts. Lord, I just pray over these young people in this moment. Holy Spirit, I felt you put on my heart that, that there's somebody here right now who prayed earlier. Could have been earlier this, this morning, could have been earlier this week or even month. But you feel unseen you feel confused and lost and you ask God help me I wish you would just tell me what to do I wish you would show me why don't you see me I'm here to tell you tonight young people that I believe my bones, God has sent Brother Thomas with this message. He is literally calling out to you saying, I sent one of my servants to tell you, write it down. You want to know how to pray? You want to know how to read the word of God? You want to know how to share the gospel? I have sent men and women into your life who humbly serve me, who love me, who want to teach you. Yet you sit there quiet. You cry out to me behind closed doors, yet when they offer their help, when they offer to show you what I have taught them, not in their power, not in their capability, but what I, God of the universe, have shared with them, have taught them, you remain a blank card. Yet you, you pray, God, why don't you see me? He sees you. He's talking to you. He's calling out to you. He's using his son to preach to you and tell you he loves you. You have value. He wants to, to disciple you. 
He doesn't want you to stay confused. There is wisdom in the counsel of many, the Bible says. Yet if you choose to live a life of a fool, you will become a fool. I encourage you, write down that person you're praying for. Because guess what we're going to do? We're going to pray with you. We're going to pray for you. We're going to follow up and encourage and, and not condemn, but, but check in and say, brother, sister, are you, are you following God's heart? Are you following his will? Are you doing what you said you wanted to do? And maybe you are the one Thomas was talking about. I don't even know if he's real. I don't even know if I believe anymore. Write it down. Come on now, use your common sense. You want to be a logical thinker. Let's, let's be consistent, young people. Logically speaking, what do I have to lose? Some words on a car, an awkward phone call a week, a month from now with a pastor. Worst case scenario. Best case scenario, I receive a relationship with Jesus Christ. My sins are cleansed. My soul is saved. I get to go to heaven where I belong and spend all eternity with my Lord and Savior. Come on now. Logically speaking, you'd be a fool not to write something down. Father, I just thank you for these young people. I thank you for what you're doing in their lives. Father, I thank you for the struggles. I know it sounds weird, but God, you have shown me and taught me that in my failures and my shortcomings, it displays your glory because you redeem me. You use our fleshly moments like cutting a man's ear off, denying Jesus Christ to the point where I couldn't even be at his crucifixion. You don't leave us there. You don't leave us in the turmoil. You don't leave us in the fight. You don't leave us in the storm. You send victory our way and you say, son, turn your eyes to heaven. Daughter, lift your head. This is not who you are. Do you love me? Young people, listen to him tonight. Do you love me? Do you love me? Father, I'm here to tell you I do. I do. I do. But it is only because you love me first. While I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. I don't deserve it. I don't understand it. I can't comprehend it. I have no context for that kind of love. But Father, I just speak this over them tonight. I don't need to understand it. I don't need all my questions to be answered. There's only one thing I need. It's you. I just accept it. I will never understand your grace. I will never understand your patience with a sinner like me. Oh, but Lord, the redemption, the grace, the mercy, I accept it all. Let it be enough. You, you, Jesus. these cards, Lord. I pray over each and every card that has something written on it, Lord. You know the people. You know the circumstances. 
That's the best part of prayer. I get to pray to a God who doesn't need me to understand. He doesn't need the timeline. He doesn't need, I can pray for people in the past and future because you operate outside of time. God, I love you. Oh, I love you so much because you right now know what is written down and I just pray over it tonight. We as a youth group pray over these cards, whatever they be written about four and two. Have your way, Lord. Have your way in every situation. Have your way in every single life. That you would be glorified, that you would be personified, that people will be brought to your glory through your servants. We intercede on their behalf in the name of Jesus. We pray this. Amen. All right. Well, everybody give a round of applause for Thomas New. Bring in the word, Lord. I love you, buddy. I do have, uh, before we before we break and have snack and, and play some volleyball and stuff, I do have one more uh, thing I want to announce. Um, we're going to start doing a new thing. Uh, some of our leaders had such a great idea. Uh, leaders, I ask you to come forward, please, and just kind of spread out uh, up amongst the front here. One of the things we want to start doing is we take prayer very seriously here, guys. You know this. Um, I just really want to encourage you, if you have anything personal that you want prayed for. It can be, you know, a prayer request for, you know, a sickness in the family or or something as, you know, silly. God doesn't have silly prayers, uh, but something is something we would deem silly, like a dog being sick or, or you know, a goldfish dying. I don't care what it is.